first speaker is uh, Mateus Pust. He, he works at IPAN Systems, and besides that, he is a member of the C++ Standards Committee. This is where we met each other. And some of you already were with Mateus yesterday because he was uh, giving a very nice uh, a workshop on core routines, which I hope you, you could enjoy if you were uh, there. But today, Mateus is not t talking anything about uh, core routines, but he will be uh, talking about a library called MP units. By the way, uh, Mateus, I was thinking MP units means Mateus plus units, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah the problem is that uh, if I just name it units, you will find plenty of projects named units, and they collide, and it's hard to find, right? Just Google for units, and you will find plenty of them. Also, there are some possible crushes between namespaces of, of, those, of those projects. That's why we had to provide something better, and it was the first thing that actually <laughs> people I got about him. Mateusz's units and so on. So yeah, I just provide so, abbreviation of that. So uh, uh, I don't know if I have to speak more while uh, things are set up because I, I have nothing interesting to say. <laughs> but well. Welcome everyone. I hope that everyone can hear me. I have those microphones here, so I cannot move too much. But uh, hopefully it will be it will be fine. So uh, for the uh, for the recording, okay, I'm going to use this this laser. Um, welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Mateusz Pusz. I'm the principal software engineer at IPAM Systems. I'm also a C++ trainer and the active voting member of the ICC++ committee. Uh, today we are going to start the conference with physical units talk and I think that's a really good subject to start the conference that's actually hosted by the School of Engineering, right? Um, in engineering you are using units on every single day. Either those are physical units like speed, acceleration, length, mass, other things or IT units like bits, um, modulation rate and, and many other things, right? So all of those have their own physical uh, meaning and because of it you want to have strong types for them and that's why physical units library arise on the market they improve safety and I'm going to show you some of the things that I've learned during the years working on this one because I'm working on this library probably right now about 10 years um, and, and at least the project on the, on, on the github has six years but I started before right uh, so I've learned many new, new things. I've learned, I have many new uh, feedback from the users. And this is why we started version two that I'm going to also talk about today. All right, so first we're going to start with the lessons learned because maybe some of you have seen my talks that I provided like three years ago about my version one of the library. It provided a really cool stuff called the, that I named actually the uh, downcasting facility. The casting facility uh, was the core uh, feature of the library. Entire version one of the library was built around it. And we found out some issues with that, and I'm going to talk about it because it's still really cool and really nice practice and uh, technique to use in the programming, but it's not useful or not, not that successful for this specific domain. Also, I will mention what else cannot be covered by the previous framework. And also I will answer the common question, why UDLs are not a good solution for units? Because this is the first question I get from every user coming, asking why you're not using UDLs in the version two. UDL is a user-defined literal. And that, for example, Chrono is using for seconds, uh, hours, and other things. And I will show you also some problems with the definitions we had. And then I will, of course, show you all of the solutions with version two. So uh, the casting facility is a quite innovative, powerful feature. When I was talking about this on conferences, people said it is quite nice and, and um, using the language in a bit different way that people used to use it before. Um, I'm not going to talk how it works. If you want to actually find out how it's being implemented, you should find my previous talks. I will just mention about the 
things, maybe roughly what it does, and then about the issues we found about this. Uh, typically, when you are doing any physical units library, you are dealing with something like this, right? You have uh, some function like a very speed that takes length, time, and produces speed. Um, this is what you're doing inside of such function, right? You are dividing length by time because this is how you get speed. And the framework does all of the calculations producing a template with the uh, description of this equation you're doing. So you can expect something long, something big information that I divided length by time, right? Um, but the user would like to see speed. So if you're doing something like this, I'm passing 140 kilometers and two hours, I would like to get a quantity of speed here uh, as a result. Notice that I don't measure any speed at all in this case. I don't know what is actual kind of length, what is time, what is the unit being used here. So it's actually hard to, in the generic program, return a strong type. You only can generate some types and return the generated things. And you want to see, of course, this result on the screen. With the downcasting facility, uh, which was totally different from all of the libraries on the market, instead of providing this long specialization of templates saying I'm dividing length by time and this is something that is like speed, I was able to get exactly those types. I get dimension speed and I get kilometer per hour as a unit. So not some long instantiation of a template. Sometimes those, this type doesn't fit on a screen if you look to some other libraries on the market. This was quite terse and really nice to work with. What is the casting facility? The casting facility is, a, let's say, a registry in the programming language when you actually say, when the framework will generate this long template. For example, probably everyone of, of you knows a basic string of char, a char traits of char, and then a stand allocator of char, right? Because this is what you always see in compiler errors for string. Compiler errors do not produce stood string. It produces this long basic string stuff. And this is exactly what happens here as well. You would prefer to see string in your compiler errors, right? And you can provide association. Wherever you see this long template for basic string, replace it with string, because this is what user provided as a strong type for that instantiation. And this is exactly what it does. So it assumes there's one-to-one -one relationship between the long type and user provided type. So if I have something like dimension speed, this is the long time I'm replacing. Kilometer per hour, this is the long time I'm replacing. So wherever framework creates this one, I return this one to the user. In order to make it work, I had to use so-called CRTP idiom, so QC recurring template parameter idiom, in order to pass this nicely named type to the underlying framework for the uh, substitution later on, right? But it has some issues. It turns out that in physical units domain, there are no one-to-one -one relationships. There are end-to-one -one relationships, right? For example, we have plenty of quantities with the same dimension, like energy and torque has the same dimension. And also frequency, activity of radionuclides, and modulation rate, all of them are quantities of time to minus one exponent, right? Also the units, hertz is one per second, becquerel is one per second, bot is one per second. And also one per second is a unit by itself, right? If you want to measure number of cars on the, on, on the highway, you will not use becquerel for that, right? You want to measure them in cars per second, right? And unfortunately, if you provide more definitions, more nicely user name type for the same template, then basically the facility fails because it says, well, I see this instantiation and I have three of them. I don't know which one to choose. And this makes it hard. That's why we provided some workarounds. We provided something called alias units. Actually, so what framework was doing was saying that, well, well, hertz is the same, bot is the same as hertz, it's just named bot. And kilobot was similar, and we provided an alias for frequency to be modulation right, right? But wherever you end up with the calculation, you will see in the error messages actually the, the frequency instead of modulation rate, unless you explicitly convert this frequency to modulation rate, which is possible because this is simply inheritance, right? Or, or in this case, uh, this is the, the alias, but for the units, it's inheritance. Another issue is that uh, the unit will be reprinted as hertz and, unless you will explicitly convert. And also, we found out that it's totally impossible to print one per second because one per second is always hertz. So if you want to end up with one per second, it always converts things to hertz because ha, I know what it is, right? So we had some issues with that. Another issue is that 
Um, we are using here SI speed header. Notice that I'm not using any unit from, from the speed domain in this code. So when you run, run a tool like include what you use, it will say speed header is not being used here. You should just use dimension speed to specify this, uh, this concept. If you remove the header file with the definition of speed, all of the units, then you get this. Because the framework do not see the definition, nice user provided definition, right? Because framework tries to find the definition that is not being used by you as a user in the code base, but it's useful to actually make the conversion. So the tools actually work against us in this case. And this is not that nice anymore, right? Another issue, uh, when you have two transition units, one providing this header file with the definition, another one forgetting about it. Then the same function, every speed produces two different results as you've seen on previous slides, which is so-called one definition rule violation. So you have to be consistent which, with what header files you are including in entire program, which may be inconvenient. All right, so this is about the drone casting facility issues that we discovered. I still think that it's a really good technique for cases when you actually have one-to-one -one relationships. And if, as long as you care about header files being included properly, it's a really good tool to make error messages much user-friendly. But for this domain, we had to get rid of this and find out and actually we found out really exciting stuff when we got rid of it that we can actually improve a lot of things. Other issues. Um, our error messages, even though they're still quite terse because they fit on the screen uh, for one type, these tend to be less and less readable because when we started to extend uh, the ratios, because stood ratio is not the solution. We had to provide our own means to provide really huge ratios. Uh, that cannot be, for example, some supported by stud ratio or provide the floating point ratio, for example, to convert radians to, to degrees, which cannot be expressed easily with stud ratio, right? Because it's a floating point number by being used in the conversion. So that's why how those error messages started to be longer. Also, we were not able to provide some of the dimensional analysis in our code. We, I'm going to show what it means later. And one more important thing, um, units should compose. If you are not having composable design for units, it doesn't scale. This is the unit of, I think, uh, the uh, angular momentum or something like this, right? Angular momentum, oh, actually, actually, actually it's written. <laughs> angular momentum, and the unit is kilogram meter square per second. First of all, it's really long to type, but now consider how many uh, prefixed scaled units of that you would like to provide. Maybe you want to provide gram meter per square second or maybe kilogram kilometer squared per hour. There's an explosion of things that you should provide as a predefined to the users, right? And it starts to be messy. Um, another thing is how to isolate quantities of different kinds. If you, want, if you want to add hertz plus bot, what does it mean to add hertz plus bot? In V1, it was, well, it's two hertz, right? Because of those aliases we used. But probably it's not a correct solution, right? And talking about quantity kinds, if you would like to provide strong typing for, for different quantities of the same kind, so different quantities of length, you would like to create a length with and vertical a kind to create length, width, and height. For example, if you want to measure a box, right? It has different dimensions. You don't want to provide them in a wrong direction. One of the examples my, my user, a contributor on the, on the GitHub provided is that I, if I'm driving the, the, the truck on the highway, I want to make sure that I fit in the tunnel upwards, not sideways, <laughs> right? And well, as long as this was possible to create those, but then to provide derived quantities, how to do it from these definitions, right? It doesn't work correctly, it doesn't compose as well. And now finally UDLs. Uh, first of all, user defined literals, as you see the name of that, it's about literals. So things that are known at compile time. If you will think about your program, how many 
numbers, how many values you know at compile time, and how, how, of them, how many of them are actually runtime variables, right? I'm not talking about unit tests, right? Besides unit tests, you don't have many constants. There are, of course, a few in physics, but there are just a few. Plenty, majority of all your variables will be just runtime variables, so this is not useful at all, right? Another point, if you're using chrono, guess what is the representation type of the first and second variable? It looks like int and double, right? But it's not. It's int 6040 and long double, because the literal always extend to the longest possible representation to make sure you fit the value inside. And this is really bad, because when I'm doing some, in a, if I am in an embedded project, trying to work with short, because I know that working with small values, just to save memory, and then I add literal or multiply by literal, immediately the entire type system uses the longest type possible, a common type. Right? So even though I am in the domain where I want to be terse and provide really short types for memory saving, using one literal in our code base may convert all of my quantities to be the longest possible type in the type system. Also, we found out that many of the literal identifiers are already reserved by compilers by, non, by vendor specific non standard extensions. So the uh, symbols for Farad, Joule, Watt, Kelvin, and many others are already reserved by the compilers for some literals already. Uh, that's why we couldn't just use those, we had to provide this Q prefix to not collide with them. Another point is if you are specifying two different systems, SI and CGS, CGS is centimeter gram second system. Uh, both of them have second. If you provide two UDLs in two different systems and you want to use both of them at the same time, how do you disambiguate the UDL you want to use? You cannot prefix a UDL with a namespace. So at this point, you have two definitions and the compiler basically says, well, you cannot, I, you cannot provide information which one should be used, so you cannot use any of them. And they don't compose. Again, the same unit that you've seen before. You have to provide those exact UDLs for every possible variation of the unit that you want to use, right? So I will write probably one, like 100 of different UDLs only for this one quantity type to make sure that I covered all of the grants or mo most, common, mo most common grants that users use because all of them will be, well, thousands probably with all of the prefixes. Also, UDLs are quite variables to define and specify because they always need two overloads for two different versions. One is for uh, integral version, one is for, for, long, for floating point. That's a lot of cost for something that cannot be used in most of the code base because most of the code base is based on the runtime values, not compile time values. Right? So that's why it's a lot of cost, doesn't scale, works only for, 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 for a short amount of, 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 un of units I'm working with. So this doesn't work. Uh, and wait, even though the, my library is quite terse to standardize systems because I don't have used macros like all other libraries do to provide several definitions for the same quantity or a unit, it still provides a lot of, a lot of mess, especially if you want to provide different ways of creating quantities. None of this is needed in new design. So talking about new design, uh, I started version two of physical units library. It's still work in progress. So uh, I hope it will be uh, on the compiling correctly on the branch in one month. Right now I'm covering the corner cases that still doesn't compile uh, from the V1 uh, features. But I think that I'm on the good path to finish that. I just need some more time and I hope to have more in the upcoming months. So why V2 if V1 was not released yet, you may ask. Right? right now we are on version 0.7.0 and preparing to, really, to provide the last version of the previous stream being 0.8.0. And I don't want to give an impression that 1.0 is just making the interface stable. Because this is not just an evolution of previous stuff. We started from scratch. It's a totally different product. product. I could start like Eric Nibbler with Rangers v3 as a new repository, units v2. But I decided just to jump to the, to the next version. I don't want to create another repository being side by side with the other, with one. And this is a huge breaking change for the users. My product is already being used in production, which sucks to break users. And I'm really sorry for that, but 
I hope I will be able to convince you that V2 is much better in any sense, so you want to change, right? Because you provide new abstractions, new interfaces, new namespaces, header files, content, and layout is different in V2, so it's a huge breaking change for everyone. I said we could start a new project, but decided to just switch to V2 to show that actually the change is really, really big and important. All right, so before I actually will start talking, talking about the V2 features, I want to show you one thing that will be common to all of the slides later on. We ended up with a new style of definition of things in our library. Uh, it turns out that users always work in our code with the values of some types, but the types will be will be observed in the error messages and in the debugger, right? So in order to make those two relate each, nicely to each other, we ended up um, with the pattern when we actually create a type and an instance of this type with the same name. So user uses the instance and then the error message uses the type. If they have exactly the same name, it's easier actually to reason about the code. So if I were to a quantity like this, meter per second, this is a quantity of, of meter per second here, right? Notice how easy it is to spell it, how easy it is to understand it, and this is only C++ 20, right? Before, it was not possible in the language at all to write things like that. And the resulting thing of that will be a type like this, quantity of the right unit meter per second, because we are using expression templates right now to store the information, what was provided here. I think this is really easy to read, really easy to understand, and really easy to comprehend, because this is the value, this is the type. But the fact that you're using the same, the same identifier makes it really easy to reason about. Sometimes you may even get lost, you, you may not realize that you are, those are actually two different things, type and, and the value, and this is good, right? You don't want to see something like meter underscore t, second underscore t here in the error messages. I can do it, but well, it will not be that nice. So this is something that you will see a lot in this library right now. Um, in general, we say that physical quantity libraries are to provide type safety, right? And for correct code. So for School of Engineering, this is really important to know those, uh, those properties, right? In case I'm writing the interface like this, I cannot replace, for example, the arguments. I can't provide the time first and the length later because this will be a compile time error, which is great. Also, if I provide a wrong equation here, like doing multiplication, for example, instead of division, you will get a compile time error stating this is not a speed. And this is for safety of your code base, of your users, right? Uh, yeah, I want to sleep when my Tesla car or whatever other car drives me home, right, after the party. And want to be sure that nothing wrong happens uh, with, with things like this. So this are, there are a lot of benefits of using that, right? There's, arguments can be reordered, uh, the equations are being verified by the compiler. Also, unit scaling is handled automatically by the library. For example, if this is in meters, this is in kilometers, the, the library will do it for you. You don't have to remember about all of the ratios and do it manually to actually multiply and divide all the time all of the quantities. This is what you do if you're actually dealing with doubles for units, and this is so common to see this even in production, to still use double for quantities like this. And then you have a lot of macros to convert between units. Don't do it. And there's no runtime overhead. It's as fast as using doubles or even sometimes faster because of strong type being used. So this in general about uh, all, every physical units library. We say that they improve interfaces. And then immediately with any product on the market, we write something like this. How does this improve the interface? Right? You probably see a lot of possible problems you may have here with this, with this uh, construction. And as long as we can provide strong typing for different quantities of different types, none of the pro products I'm aware of supports that correctly. And I'm trying to actually solve this also with my V2 library. But first, in order to know how we can solve it, we have to actually talk about proper system abstractions. Maybe let's do some, some quick voting. How many of you have heard about SI system of units? Hands up. Um, it's most of the room, right? 
How many of you have heard about ISQ, International System of Quantities? I don't see any hand, one hand there, right. But because we met on ACCU. <laughs> right, so there are different kinds of systems. First of all, we have system of quantities. This is just system of physical quantities that abstracts away the value and the unit. It's just about quantity types, dimensions as we understand them. And actually there is a standard provided by ISO organization, the same that standardizes C++ called ISO 80000 that specifies hundreds of quantities in the system. It's called ISQ, International System of Quantities. And then a side definition is ex explicitly stated to be based on International System of Quantities. SI provides units for those quantities, but the quantities are specified by different standards. My library is probably the first one that I'm aware of on the market trying to solve that in any programming language, not only C++. I couldn't find any other library that actually tries to solve ISQ system and make it work. Maybe there are some closed source libraries, but I'm not aware about them, right? So there is not only about the implementation thing, I still have to find the logic how to make it correctly. So if something looks odd or wrong, please let me know, provide the feedback because I spent last month trying to figure out how it should work correctly. So in ISQ, of course, we have those seven uh, base dimensions. So you define them the same as you've seen. It's quite terse. I'm not trying to make you force to, to read all of those here. I just want to show you how terse the definitions are. You provide only base dimensions in the framework. You don't have to provide the right ones because the right ones will be um, provided implicitly <coughs> by the framework later on based on so-called quantity equations, you will see. Um, and notice this thing, all of the highlighted things here are non-type template parameters that are allowed only starting from C20. This makes it much easier and much better to provide those definitions right now, and it was impossible before C20. So entity PPs are also, entity P stands for non-type template parameters. But dimension is not enough to specify all properties of a quantity. There are more than one quantity may be defined for the same dimension, right? We may have different kinds, like frequency, modulation rate, activity. We've seen those already, like, right? So we don't want to be able, for example, to add them. Also, there, is, there are quantities of the same kind, length, width, altitude, distance, radius, wavelength, position vector. All of them have the same dimension, but you want to treat them differently with strong typing in the type system. Also, quantities may have different character. There are scalars, vectors, tensors. Maybe you also want to model that. Also, some quantities are defined as non-negative. This is a great thing for contrast that hopefully will come to the C++ standard language at some point. Right? ISQ system says those are quantity of length, the same dimension. But look how many quantities are specified just for length. Right? Those are alias names in one box, and those are quantities creating a tree of the, uh, of the quantity, right? Thickness is a width, width is a length, but width is not a height, right? All of this logic has to be modeled with C++ language right now, and this is what I'm trying to deal with and provide all of the logic for that correctly. So if you want to define a root of the quantities, you provide the dimension. So length, it being the root of this tree, just takes the dimension, then to create the leaf, I'm just specifying this quantity of length, being width, and then if I want to provide an alias, like we've seen, I said that breadth is just the same as width. And those are the definitions that you've seen on the tree. Again, I'm not expect you to read everything, I just want to see how terse and how easy to read it is. Right, and for time. Uh, using this ISQ, I was able to remove all of those quantity kinds you've seen before. The specific type, specific class templates for that, because right now I just have a type of the quantity specified by ISQ, and it makes it just work and compose, as you'll see later on as well, really nicely. But let's talk about conversions. Uh, I was thinking about this tree a lot of time, and of was trying to find out what should be the arithmetics and what should be the conversions in the middle of the tree, right? And I found out that two Typical versions that you have of, of the cast is not enough in the language because we typically have implicit and explicit cast. 
I said that this is not enough. I also provided a cast level here. So if you have a tree like this, we have three different kinds of, of conversions, right? And we say that width is not length, is not height, because they are different, but they are convertible. Width can be converted to length, because every width is a length, right? Uh, length is not a width. Not every length is a width, so it's not implicitly convertible, but you can use explicit conversion to say this length is a width, right? Height and width are totally different. So you cannot either implicitly or explicitly convert. If you want to do such unsafe operation, you have to use explicit cast. And of course, time is not length. It will not convert in any way, because this is just wrong. This is how you create direct quantities. You specify the equation you want to use to specify the uh, direct quantity, right? So area is squared length. Speed is length by time, and so on. Again, NTTPs are awesome. It makes it so nice to provide those definitions right now. And now I can provide this pure dimensional analysis that I was not able to provide in V1. I don't need any values. I don't need any units. I can still check what is the quantity kind, what is the dimension, right? So I say that area dimension is the same as pow 2 of dim length, or speed dimension is the same as dim length divided by dim time, and so on. All of those checks can be done at compile time to verify if your equation is correct, to constrain your function templates, or whatever. This was one of the requests I got from the community as well. What should be the result of this equation? Right? Hertz is a unit of frequency. Becquerel, units of activity. Both units of modulation rate. All of them are <coughs> quantities of dimension time to minus one exponent. And I checked several units on the library, on the, on the internet, right? Both units does not support both at all. Right, so I just check those two. What do you think? What's the result from boost units? It's two hertz, obviously, right? So maybe it depends on the order of, of, the, of the addition. So maybe if I change the order, what would be the result here? Any guesses? Two becquerels, two hertz? Yeah. Two hertz, obviously, right? This is the obvious result. Uh, Nick Holthaus units, really popular product on the market as well. Provides quite a better answer. But still, probably, this should not be possible, right? It's not only about C++, Pint in Python. They have both. And the result is, of course, 3 hertz, right? Java solution. I love this uh, arithmetics in Java. <laughs> but actually, this was the only library that provided compile time error. And notice how great are error messages in Java. This is something that we probably never achieve in C++. I try to be as good as possible, but I will never achieve those compile time errors. The method add in the type is not applicable for arguments of radioactivity. In C++, this will be like 10 screens of errors. <laughs> Even with concepts. All right, so ISO 80000 says explicitly there is something called quantity kinds. Quantities may be grouped together into categories of quantities that are mutually comparable. Mutually comparable quantities are called quantities of the same kind. Two or more quantities cannot be added or subtracted unless they belong to the same category of mutually comparable quantities. Quantities of the same kind with a given system of quantities have the same quantity dimension. Quantities of the same dimension are not necessarily of the same kind. Right? So ISQ says those are the quantities of time to minus one exponent. Not only three, I just shown you on the examples, there are more. Angular velocity, frequency, rotational frequency, angular frequency, damping coefficient, activity, transfer rate with derived quantities, maybe not derived, but with different types of the same quantity, color intensity, modulation rate. All of those have the same dimension. But those are distinct kinds. So you should not be able to compare them and add them. Right? That's why I introduced the kind of modifier to quantity specification. The nodes a family of quantities belongs to the same kind. Such quantity represents any quantity from this tree that you've seen. Can be obtained through get kind. So get kind on width of width is the same as get kind of height, namely kind of ISQ length. Right? Quantity of kind of quantity spec 
is implicitly convertible to any quantities from its tree because I say I have a quantity, any quantity of length, I can add it or compare it to any other quantity of length, right? Because it represents a kind, any from this tree. But quantities of different kinds can be compared, added, or subtracted. For derived quantities, it's even harder. Because for derived quantities, often you get just equations. Equations like this. Mass length by time square. It's a just dimension of the energy. But for kinetic energy, you know exactly that it is mv squared by 2. Right? This is how you create kinetic energy. For gravitational potential energy, you know this is MGH, right? We learned it at the universities, right? And if you have those, well, they do not have anything in common. They do not create a tree by themselves, even though those are all of the quantities of energy. So you cannot come just depend on those equations to provide you a, this nicely provided tree of quantities like I've drawn you here. That's why you have some alternative means to create a tree and also to constrain some quantities with additional equations. So in my definitions, first parameter is defining the tree, like we had before, and the second one constrains the quantity, if needed, to provide additional recipe to be able to convert to this quantity. By the way, concepts are awesome. Notice that I'm using class template exactly the same how we use overload set of functions with this use case. I'm providing totally different types, totally different abstractions, and expect different behavior, but providing the same name. Otherwise, before C++20, I should write something like quantity spec and quantity spec with equation or with recipe as a different type. Or play with Sphina for types, which sucks. Right? So with concepts, you can write it like an overload set, which is quite nice. Users can always add new quantities. It's really easy to extend. You just provide line to create horizontal length, another line to provide horizontal area, stating the horizontal area is an area and has a quantity of horizontal length and width. Right? And then everything works as expected. All of the conversions work as expected. Horizontal area is an area, but area is not a horizontal area because it may be another area. So we have all of these conversions working as expected, type safe and easy to use. So this is about ISQ. We are done. I, just, I know that was something you may be domain heavy, but as it's something new that I just have to figure out, I wanted to share it with you because all of this logic is quite brand new and we have to find out in production and in tests if it actually proves to be correct what I just described to you. So now we're going to something really obvious, something that everyone knows. So as a unit, actually after that everything is trivial because this is already established practice. We know how to deal with this. But the definitions are exactly the same, right? We have all of those units for, for SI. And I specify that uh, what is the kind for each unit that they describe, right? Because in SI, second is used to measure time. That's any time, right? Or meter is used to measure any length. That's why they have definition of kind of length. This is true for SI, but not for other units. If you would like to work with natural unit systems, then a second or meter or anything else can be used to measure different quantities. In those cases, you don't specify those, but for the slide where I'm not doing, going to talk about natural units, right? But it's possible if needed. Direct units, again, use the same equations, right? And you can also constrain them for specific kinds. Like I may say, radian can be used only for angular measures, not for any dimensionless quantity. Or hertz can be used only for frequency not for any dimension of one per second or unit one per second, right? And this is how you make things not add together later on with bots or, or becquerels. And again, did I already mention that NTTPs are awesome, right? Every single parameter of those, of those templates here is NTTP. It is so great. There are plenty of prefixes. This is how you specify them. Right? Notice that those are in additional namespace, so they are opt-in to not collide with your interfaces. So you have to opt-in for them to use. But I also want to mention that student ratio cannot support those. Those are just too big or too small to be represented by student ratio. That's why we have to invent new ways of dealing with, 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 with ratios and with things that big. 
And the, late, the, the last two, and the first two, Quento, Ronto, Arona, Queta, are the new prefixes introduced, I think, in November last year to SA system. So finally, what is a quantity? Because we spoke a lot about things, but we never created a quantity for now, right? Quantity by the ISO is a property phenomenon where the property has a magnitude that can be expressed as a number and a reference. A reference can be a measurement unit. So quantity is something that has a number and a reference. So this is our definition in the code, right? We have reference and a representation type for a quantity. We store reference as a public type for everyone. And then we have a number. Notice that number is public. Number is public because this is the current definition of, of structural types in the C++ language. And this definition sucks, in my opinion. But this is the way how you, should, how you have to do it if, in case you want to put an instance of this class as an NTP parameter to another template. And I will show you a use case when it's useful. I would love to have this a private member, but then it will not compile. I hope that structural types definition at some point in the language will be improved, but for now we don't have a better solution. So we have a number and another number in specific unit to provide even better safety. And concepts is the key feature that actually allows all of this to work correctly. Create a quantity. You can create a quantity by definition, like this one, either using a si meter or a symbol if you include the namespace. You can multi you can use create quantities with multiply syntax, either using long or short version. You can use mixed, of course, and you can provide, of course, the conversions as well, right? With both cases. Explicit keyword is not explicit enough in the language. This is stood crown duration in some structure X, in some vector. And this is the code that initializes this in the code base. This constructor taking 42 in chrono duration is an explicit constructor. But this is the type today. This is type tomorrow. Do you see how hard it is to maintain such code base? Right? You change the type. The code compiles. You go on. You don't see that place back actually right now provides a bad unit for the type. That's why we chose to not provide such a constructor that duration has in our code base. So you cannot create a quantity from a value directly. You always have to provide a unit. What about quantity spec? Because I talked about quantity spec, but I didn't use it yet in the quantity definition. So as I mentioned, meter is kind of length. Second is kind of time. So if you create those, Actually, you have quantity spec of kind of length. If you make this speed like this, you have quantity spec of being kind of length of time, which is quite obvious. But if you want to specify something more type safe, right? You can provide things like this. This is height in meters, speed in kilometers per hour. Or convert what you had before to those in an explicit way to have height and speed. That's exactly the same result. And you get those strong types in the quantity with this syntax. I'm actually quite proud of this indexing operator usage for units because it's quite some, something quite novel in the industry. I didn't see a library using, using the syntax until now. But that's exactly how probably most of the students write it in, in the notebooks right now in the, on, on the university, right? This is how we did it. At least, this is how I did it like 20 years ago. So you may wonder, how does it work? How does it work without NT CRTP? Curiously correct template parameter idiom, right? If you specify height, being a quantity spec of length, and there is no functions in height, how come this 42 times ISQ height of meters, so the, there is an indexing operator, as it's not in height, it has to be in quantity spec, how come it provides reference of ISQ height? So how come this type here knows about this type when I'm not passing this as a CRTP? <laughs> right? You see the issue, right? I'm from this type, I'm generating an instance having this type 
even though this type doesn't know anything about this type in theory. So this is how you write it. You have quantity spec. It just derives from some other quantity. And what you provide? You provide this deduction from C++23. This deduction is a great feature, probably the biggest feature of C++23 language. It says that this pointer and its type will be deduced by this template parameter from the context. So if I'm writing ISQ height of meter, I'm actually doing the instance of this index operator of this being of ISQ height type. And then I deduce this type here, and then I can put the type here to the return value. And this made all of the CRTP gone in my library for indexing operator and for this call operator for conversions. Right? C++ is a really awesome language. We have plenty of new tools. We are not creating new standards like 23, 26, 29, as, as Daniel said, right? Just to make you suffer and learn more. We want to provide you better tools that provide better possibilities to make it more efficient, faster, or safer, not just to make you suffer and provide some fireworks in the language. Right? This allows you to provide much better ex experience and much better interfaces with many things. All right, so what about arithmetics? Mutually be quant compare quantities are called quantities of the same kind, as we already know. Two or more quantities cannot be added or subtracted unless they belong to the same kind, as ISO standard says. It was quite hard to actually deal with that because this is something maybe not um, trivial to understand, but this says that I can compare width and height because they are both quantities of length. It may look like not type safe, but actually it improves a lot usability. I could require explicit casts everywhere, but it will be so hard to do. Also, I can add width and length, and it will be two meters. But what is the type of that, you may wonder? The type of it, it will be length, right? And also have some sense. If I if the Christmas, Christmas are coming, right, and I have a box to pack with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the wrapping paper, I have to find out what should be the length of the wrapping paper to pack a box, right? It will be two times width, two times height, plus some margin, and it is the length, right? So two times height, two times width is a length of the wrapping paper, right? So this is fine. This is type safe as long as the resulting type is length, and as length is not implicitly convertible to height, then you cannot accidentally make a mistake if you would like to assign the result back to height because it will not compile. Then you have to convert. What about value conversions? When there are value presenting conversions like uh, five kilometers represented in meter, it is fine because you can always represent kilometer in meter with no truncation. Also, if I'm having a dub, uh, this is double? No, this is the same, just doing the conversion on the, on the construction. Truncating conversions. When I'm having a double here, and I want to convert this to int, I can't do this implicitly. I have to use it explicitly <coughs> with a cast, saying I'm truncating the value. I will lose the precision converting this to integer, right? Also, yeah, if I have a unit converted in another direction that is unsafe, if I convert those meters to kilometer, I will lose some information. That's why we need casts for that. So this is about units. What about quantity types? I can assign height to length always because height is a length, right? But I cannot assign a length to height explicit, implicitly because not every length is a height. So I need to use explicit conversion, and this is how we type it. You say explicitly, I want to convert this to height and then assign it here. If I want to do something really strange, like con convert width to height, I have to use really verbose quantity cast to say I'm doing something unsafe. And there are use cases for that. I will show this on the next screens. So, for example, if I want to calculate spherical distance, I have earth radius and Haverstein formula to actually calculate things. Then I can use earth radius multiplied by central angle, and from this radius, I get distance on the, on the earth surface. And this is actually when those casts are useful. Sometimes you want to convert between those things, but you want to be explicit that you are doing something unsafe. There's one more thing I want to show you. I have to use this using declaration here for sine and cosine because I'm putting here a quantity of ISQ angular measure. You may wonder about yourself, why I have to do it? 
We have ADL in the language. Argument dependent name lookup should take the namespace of this argument here and use it. Unfortunately, it is not the case. Standard XPCT says that uh, there is a lookup that uses sets of, of zero or more associated namespaces, and associated namespaces are determined in the following way. We, for class type specializations, we are using namespaces associated with the types of the template arguments provided for template type parameters. And there's explicit note saying that template arguments do not contribute to the set, non-type template arguments do not contribute to the set of associated namespaces, explicitly stated in the standard. So it doesn't work. And there is more than one way to actually deal with angles. SI and ISQ say that, uh, that angle is a dimensionless quantity. But there, is plen there are plenty of, of, of really good guys uh, trying to question this, 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 question this, this, um, this thing. For example, Paul Quincy states that they propose the change to SI to change the status of dimensionless status for radian and steradian because they should be strongly typed dimensions in the system. And more and more people lean towards that because this provides safety in the industry. So that's why in my library I have two definitions for ISQ being dimensionless and then for angular system the same operations um, for uh, type safe angles. As long as I could use sign in one namespace because every load resolution will just work fine because those are of different types, angular measure and angle, the load resolution will, will work fine. For assign, I can't because the input is the same. For arcus sinus, you just provide a scalar, a value, and expect to have angle as a result. And we can't overload on returning types. And input is the same. So I have to put them in different namespaces. If I put them in different namespaces, I have this problem that ADL doesn't find them. Right? Because, because of this thing. So ADL rules in the language are incomplete. I think it was quite fine before C20 because we couldn't do much with NTTPs before it. But right now we have plenty of new exciting possibilities for this feature and it doesn't work for them. So we can either write this way, which is really nice syntax as you've seen, right, easy to reason about, but ADL doesn't work. Or write it this way, which sucks, but ADL works. C++ is the language that we often no, cannot have nice things in this, right? Unfortunately. We can try to fix it, but this is a breaking change. Because even before C20, you could have a type X in namespace my, and, or enumeration in namespace my, and you could provide instantiations of templates for enumeration or the pointer to your type X. Until then, until this change, the namespaces of my were ignored. If I will right now provide a proposal asking to, 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 to use this namespace, then possibly this old code will find a full function in a different namespace, which may be a breaking change for your code. So probably this is no go, but if any one of you have some ideas how to make it fly, I would be eager to contribute to this proposal. I wish we had epochs in the language and say, well, in this module, we are doing something new, something better. This could be a solution. All right, so you've seen this book example before in different languages. Right now, with this solution, you can explicitly say this is horizontal length, width, and height, right? And this horizontal area and height, we, to be explicit, how we create it. And two other, two last solutions are type safe. First one, it may be unsafe, but it's, it's up to you to decide which one you want to use. Mm -hmm. It's up to the user to decide when and where to care about explicit quantity types and when to prefer simple unit only mode. So if you are de decide to use this to create quantities, then you're working in an unsafe domain. If you want to be in safe domain, you are in safe domain. And in this case, if you reorder arguments, you will have a compile time error. Of course, you can use generic interface as well with concepts. This works fine. And then you always get the unit of derived units as expected. So with templates, it's also really easy to use. And sometimes you also want to have 
custom representation types, like measurement. Measurement is a class template in my case that has two members, not one. One is a value, another one is an error, uncertainty of the measurement. And then whenever you use it, like measurement with 123 meters and uncertainty one meter, multiplied by 10, you want to see how an error changes. This should work as well. Or something more long, maybe not more, not harder, but longer, right? For multiplication, facilitation, measurement. You want to get those and have the result either in meter per second, because those, was, was the, those were the input, or converted to kilometers per hour, have this being converted as well. So you want to use things like this as well in the library. But there is one thing, one, one issue that actually I, I found out and it bothers me. When I want to implement my measurement library, I can initially easy pass value to the member, but for the second parameter, I have to make ABS on this one. And I don't know what is T here. It might be a fundamental type, but it may be another user-specified type. So I cannot put just std ABS, because std ABS is only for fundamental types. I have to provide using declaration, and I cannot do it for the initializer list in the constructor. And it hurts me, because I always say to my students that if, you're, if you already have to write a constructor, because try to not do it, but if you already have to do it, then at least keep the brackets here empty. Put everything in the initializer list, if only possible. But with this, I can't. I have to provide this using declaration here. Right? Also, if I want to implement this on my site in the library, take a quantity of ABS, and I want to make constraints to make this ABS work with using, I cannot make this using before I do constraints. So I have to check for, for both, for ABS and std ABS on a constraints list, because I cannot do using before constraints are checked. Right? And there are many people right now working on different ma mathematical uh, types, numeric types. Type safe types, in type safe integers, uh, some fixed precision stuff. Um, this one, or, or other things like CMD, right? Maybe we actually deserve to have some CPUs, customization point objects for mathematical functions in order to make it easier to work for all of this environment of different types that arise on the market. It actually happens that we have a chair of study group six, numerics, <laughs> in the room right now. So if you like this, go and bother him because I already did. <laughs> right paper. <laughs> First, we have to find out if it's actually important. So we have to find out if there are use cases. And for this, we can, we can bother some guys. <laughs> then we can write a paper if we said that it's already important for more people, not just me. Last but not least, affine space. Right? You probably know um, duration and time point in the Chrono library. This is something similar, right? I'm providing a new reference, <laughs> reference thing, mean C level. It's absolute point origin for height called mean sea level. And I can create quantity point of height in meters with mean sea level. And I can provide two different quantity points. One will be for Zurich airport, one will be for, for Gdańsk airport, my hometown. This is how, what the elevation of the, of the airport. And then I can specify new quantity points being the altitude over the airport. And notice that I'm passing those two here as quantity point types Objects of those, I'm passing them as another template parameters inside. And this is why I need those structural types. Because quantity point stores a quantity inside, and both of them should be structural types so I can do them. And that's why I have number as a public member, which sucks. But this is a really good use case. Right? And then I can do all of the calculations to find out what is the relative value, what is the absolute value of those points, how they relate to each other in a type safe domain. Last but not least, faster than lightning constants. This was the original title of the, of the PR, or not PR, the, the issue on my, on my physical units library repository, repo, right? Um, we have G, everyone knows G, right? Standard gravity. This is a constant. If I have some calculations involving G, like here for field, field wave, I introduce wave. Weight, weight is a force, not a mass, just to make it straight, right? Because Plenty of people think this is the same, but it's a force. And I have field level that uses field weight also multiplying by G. So this G should just simplify 
because here G is being used and here G is being used. If you will be writing this in your paper, you'll just stroke Gs. You don't want them to actually make your compile times longer, right? Or run, so run, run time longer because you need some additional operations and possibly also change your precision because G is a huge floating point number. It may affect the precision of your calculation. So with this approach with new library, you can actually do it. And if you will print those, you'll find out that actually the unit of weight, it's G's kilograms with the integer value 100, no floating point number. So it is possible to put constants as a unit to a type. I was so proud to find it because I think this is first library in C++ to actually do this. And after that, I was providing talk on, on, on the university where I provided, I compared this to Java and Python. And it turned out that they have this feature long time ago <laughs> in their libraries already. So well, I invented this by myself because I didn't know about this earlier but it was already on the market in other languages. Of course, you can convert this here to Newtons, and then you'll see all of this floating point precision when you get rid of Gs for the, to the unit you want to use, right? So as a summary, just to finish this one, right? We no, no longer have the classic facility. When you get rid of this, which was the core functionality of the V1 design, we could rethink everything from scratch. And as you can see, this looks and feels totally like a different library right now. Many abstractions are no longer needed. We have one named unit and one quantity spec to rule them all, thanks to this overload, overload set like class templates. Much tersor system definitions. ISQ dimensions are not templates anymore, so we can do pure dimensional analysis. We have composable units, consistent NTP usage across the library. Expression templates everywhere makes the types so much easier to reason about and read. Pure dimensionless analysis possible. Quantity creating helpers, really nice. Quantity spec to improve quantity de definitions as you've seen. Support for all ISQ quantities. Pure proper support of quantity kinds and faster than lightning constants and more. But I don't want to bother you and, and bore you here with my domain here. If you're interested, please maybe contribute or, or, or provide some feedback on, the, on the, uh, our repository issues. And with this, I am done and have some time to some questions. Thank you very much. Questions? Uh, I see Timur here. And there, yeah. Questions? So you have two questions, but I'm going to say it really quickly. First question. In physics and engineering, you have things where you have a fractional power, like for example, voltage or noise density is measured in square of um, square root of hertz, mm -hmm. like s to the minus one half. Sure, it's do you support, support that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Second question: uh, You make a lot of use of CSS20, CSS23, which I think is an awesome thing. It kind of pushes, you know, the boundaries of the language, but it feels like you're kind of excluding a lot of potential customers because actually the majority of people are not on the latest standards. So I wonder how much, what's the trade-off there? How much do you feel you benefit from the latest standards? But, okay, thank you. <laughs> I have macros for backup compatibility C plus 20. I said just use CRTP. It's, uh, there it is. On, on slide 71, you have this example where you added uh, width and height. Mm -hmm. it, does that work because basically the common type is length? Yes. And both convert to that? Okay, then, then that makes sense to me. On the ADL question, uh, you probably know I have a paper on that, so I'm uh, certainly interested in, in, in finding out how to improve that. Um, a simple fix could possibly be to just have some dummy type in the namespace where you want the lookup to happen and then have an additional template parameter that just clutters up your uh, <laughs> error messages, yeah. but that would at least mm -hmm. make it work. Um, you probably don't have anything like a conversion operator in there, do you? Mm, for that, probably. No, I mean, in, 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 in the quantities, mm -hmm. um, do they convert to anything implicitly? No. Okay. Okay, that answers part of my paper question there. <laughs> and on, on 86, where you had the, uh, the, the using stit ABS, right. right? You could solve that with a lambda, right? For initialization in the. Yes, 
I could visit with them, but I, I agree, it's uh, not nice. Distance, access, right? <laughs> but and yeah. this will not help. No. Here. Yeah. Lambda doesn't help right. there. Hmm? All right. Yeah, but this is a good, good suggestion. Right. Thanks. Uh, good morning. Thank, thank you for the for this talk and also for the workshop uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, and also thank you for opening uh, in some uh, our minds about uh, this uh, topic because uh, I never realized that uh, something like that uh, exists. So thanks for for opening uh, my mind. So I have a yeah a really uh, a really basic question. So uh, you are uh, you were talking about a system, uh, uh, international system units. But uh, what about uh, imperial system units? Because uh, you know that sometimes uh, in Europe we, had, we have to mix uh, uh, equipment from different, uh, from different sources. Of course, this works. Uh, I provide imperial, I provide CGS. There are different systems in the library already. As you've seen, definitions are quite terse. It's quite easy if you want to provide your custom stuff that is not there, but a lot of things is there. It's just a matter of few lines to be added, as you've seen. The definitions are really, really terse. So thanks for the talk. Uh, I have two questions. First, in slide 39, you define the, the area as length by length, but that will allow, for example, uh, have an area of width by width, mm -hmm. which uh, it might not make sense. Or This one? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are your thoughts about that? Because uh, yeah, width by width is not, is not an area. It's, I think, something that that doesn't have sense. So it should be with by. So in in the first line is mm -hmm. uh, the area is a quantity spec of mm -hmm. length by length, mm -hmm. but that allows width by width, right? Uh, yes, this allows because a width by width is still an area, right? So this will be an area, but the area will not be width by width. So it is implicitly convertible in one way, the same as width is a length, yeah. but the length is not width. So the same will be with the area. Right? The area will not be convertible to the result of width by width because it's something more specific. Right? The same like energy and, for example, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is energy, so you can convert this way, but not every energy is a kinetic energy, so you cannot convert back. Okay. And another question what happens? The velocity, for example, is or normally three values uh, because it's in, in its. Direction. So, what happens with uh, vectors, matrices? Uh, uh, this is position vector. This is different kind of length. Uh, and I think I maybe I didn't specify this explicitly, but it says explicitly that position vector requires a representation of a vector character. So, it requires you to provide things like linear algebra vector, for example, which has okay. the information about direction. Okay. So, you could use this, for example, in Aiken or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, thank you for the talk. Um, just a quick question about the the ranges that certain uh, units or quantities can have. Like, can you have? negative mass, or is, are there any restrictions in that respect? Uh, right now, not, um, but uh, some of the quantities um, in the ISQ are explicitly stated to be non-negative, and you can provide some con contracts, some constraints about it, but I, I didn't do it yet. But some other uh, quantities that obviously cannot be negative are, for example, not defined as, as non-negative in the, in the ISQ. So they are just like selectively selected, some of them, but the rest are not marked. So for the consistency reasons, I'm not sure if I should go into this ground because I should do a lot of research to find out what has sense, what doesn't, mm -hmm. right? But I open, of course, for the feedback from the community. If you are an expert in physical units domain, you can provide some feedback which should be non-negative, which should be possible to be negative, and we can implement this quite easily. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mateusz.